All right, welcome back. We are still talking about some of the interesting accessory glands and accessory structures within the integument. And this uh, lecture is going to briefly talk about two of them, the sebaceous gland. And also I want to talk about the nail. Uh, and when I was talking about hair, um, I, I neglected to go in and talk a little bit about uh, fingernail and toenail production. And I want to, want to spend a few minutes doing that too. But let's start with the sebaceous gland. Um, if you take a look at the picture here on your left, you will see what you've already seen. Here's a couple things you know about. This is an eccrine gland. That's a sweat gland emptying out here at the surface. Remember, a, an apocrine gland would be down here and empty up into the hair follicle. So this is an eccrine, easy to, to recognize that way. Uh, look, here's your dermal papilla. That's the muscle that connects the hair follicle to the dermal papilla. Uh, sorry, erector pili. Uh, that's the muscle that connects the dermal papilla down here to the hair follicle and creates goosebumps, right? We talked about that. Um, and then I just really want to point out the hypodermis down here, uh, the ep the dermis in here, and then the epidermis out here. So just things to orient ourselves once again. But remember that one of the things we saw were these sebaceous glands. And these sebaceous glands are also sometimes referred to as oil glands, uh, and they produce an oily substance known as sebum, S-E-B-U-M, sebum. Um, and they're often, re often uh, very densely packed into the dermis wherever we have lots of hair, uh, and they typically are uh, connected to hair follicles. Not always. Sometimes they do uh, empty directly into the dermis, uh, but usually they are connected to hair follicles as they're pictured here. And I just want to talk quickly about these, the function of these glands. They're, they're quite interesting. Um, like the other accessory structures we've talked about so far, they are also an extension of the epidermis. So notice these epithelial cells from the epidermis have plunged into the dermis and are creating the outline uh, of this gland. So the sebaceous gland here uh, is actually just a plunging in of the epidermis into the dermis uh, and serves this hair follicle. So let's take a look over here and you can get a little bit better picture of it. There are actually three layers of, of epithelial cells that make up the sebaceous gland. Uh, and they're, they're listed here as a peripheral zone. ZP is the peripheral zone. I'll talk about that in a minute. These are really the stem cells, kind of the equivalent of the stratum basal in the skin. And they are producing cells uh, which will serve the sebaceous gland. And I'll, I'll show you in a moment how that happens. Then there's a maturation zone or a maturing zone. ZM is the zone of maturation. Um, I'll explain in a moment what's going on. And then finally, this necrotic zone. Um, and this is where these cells actually are dying uh, and producing their product uh, that is the sebum or, or what we think of as oil, this oily substance that is produced uh, and is, is very valuable um, to, to the body. We talked earlier about the fact that it helps make the, the hair follicles waterproof, but it also uh, produces an antimicrobial um, kind of condition as well. So, so very important from a number of reasons. But Let's go back to the zone of periphery, uh, the peripheral zone. These are the stem cells producing brand new cells that are moving in this direction. This is a theme you've seen often in the integument where a stratum uh, at the base produces brand new cells that move towards in any particular direction. So these cells are, are essentially the progenitors of all cells moving in this direction. So the, the peripheral zone are the stem cells. They produce new cell cells in the zone of maturation. And what's happening to these cells is you can see they're beginning to swell. And the reason they're swelling is that internally they're producing a substance known as sebum, S-E-B-U-M, sebum. There it's listed right there. Okay, And this substance is beginning to build up in the core of these cells. Uh, and eventually the cells swell so much with this sebum that in a, uh, in a fashion that is, a, is akin to a bursting balloon, uh, they burst here in the necrotic zone and dump the contents from inside the sebum out into the center of this sebaceous gland. And then it makes its way up and around the hair follicle and coats that hair in these uh, fatty substances, uh, lipids and oils and so on. Um, and so, so that's how the sebaceous gland works. It's got the zone of periphery, zone of maturation, and then the zone of necrosis, where those cells that have swollen with the sebum burst and release the sebum into the, the hair follicle. Okay, uh, that was the hair follicle. I now want to uh, talk quickly about another accessory structure 
which is the nail. Uh, so again, the toenails and the fingernails. And uh, I'm, I'm actually going to only ask a, a little bit uh, uh, of you in this particular area. What I want you to recognize are these are important accessory structures uh, derived again from the epidermis that are for the purposes of protection and you know also the nails give us a way uh, to to use our fingers in a dexterous way uh, to pick things up that we might not be able to do if we just had the you know the rounded ends of our fingers but those fingernails actually give us the ability to be even more dexterous uh, and so they're, they're important for that reason and, and mostly they just protect the ends of our digits uh, which otherwise are quite exposed so uh, important uh, in that in that way let me quickly run through the parts of the nail with you that I will ask you to know first of all the nail root uh, is an extension of the epidermis that protrudes down into the dermis and provides a stratum basal uh, that produces these highly keratinized uh, cells that uh, end up becoming the nail. So this is these are keratinized cells that begin end up becoming the nail. These keratinized cells are actually growing right along what is referred to as the nail bed, which is a smooth uh, bit of epithelial tissue, stratum basal, uh, in this area. So that the nail itself, uh, or what we refer, refer to as the nail body, is being produced back here at the root, a whole bunch of stratum basal cells that are producing them, and then growing out over what is referred to as the nail uh, bed. So the nail bed is here. If you were to damage a nail or cut it, let's say, a little bit too far back, what you will do is expose some of the nail bed. Uh, and if you've ever had that happen to you, you know that can be quite painful because these are uh, highly uh, sensitized uh, kinds of cells there. So anyway, the, the nail grows out over top of that nail bed. If you look at the, the superficial view of the nail, you can see a couple things. First of all, the free edge of the nail is out here. That's what you trim away when you're trimming your nails. You can see the, the nail bed because the nail body itself is rather translucent. And so notice below the nail bed is pink, and that's because it's highly vascularized. Uh, it's, it's quite thin, and uh, it, it really what you're seeing there is the blood vessels down in the dermis. Uh, and so, so really uh, it, no, interesting way of, of noticing that the nail bed itself is very thin, the nail body is quite translucent, and the pinkness that you see here is the nail bed and the, and the dermis below that with all of its uh, blood vessels. Um, the lunula here is an area of excessive epithelial cell production, and it overlies the nail bed and it's in conjunction with the new nail. So the lunula, uh, the reason you can't see the nail bed below it is because there's so many epithelial cells here. It's so thick. Uh, it's this thick pad that is helping in the production of the new nail body as it moves outward in this direction. A couple other things to notice is, uh, is this epithelial cell around here, often known as the nail cuticle, um, is also referred to as the epinechium. Epinechium is, is the uh, scientific name for the nail cuticle, uh, and it's just a, a roll of, of stratum basal cells that are producing uh, the, uh, that are overlying the area that produces the, the nail. And so that's the nail cuticle. And then if you come over here, you can see a couple other things. If you notice right underneath the, the edge of the nail is this layer of epithelial cells called the hyponechium. So the epinechium here uh, at the uh, at the cuticle, and the hyponechium is the is where the epithelial cells meet the bottom of the nail body. So hyponechium on the bottom or below it means, and then epinechium on the top. So epinechium and hyponechium. Okay, and so those are those are the things that I will ask you to know about the nails.